Energy, food, and water security are tightly intertwined in rural Alaska. And in Tanana, this is evidenced with the tight link to the land. We needed $95,000 to pay the fuel bill. It became obvious to them that you could fire that school, you know, using the Garns units. Savings was going to be tremendous. Fuel oil probably runs 350 a gallon. We have about 10,000 gallons in reserve. So if this quits for the year, we can still run off of fuel oil for the year. But at 350 a gallon, this uh, is significantly cheaper as far as the cost of, of the wood goes. This facility consumed 20,000 gallons of imported heating fuel annually. We have three Garn 2000 boilers and they burn about 200 cords of wood, which uh, displaces approximately 20,000 gallons of imported petroleum. Large-scale uh, mechanized harvesting, we can reduce the costs uh, to a third of the typical cordwood cost at Tannenau. In many rural Alaska communities, the water plant is one of the biggest users of power. Besides the woody biomass, we've explored solar panels to generate electricity. The, the, the solar panels on this roof line are 5.5 kW, and they've been operating flawlessly for over 12, 13 years now, and they displace a significant amount of electricity that would otherwise be uh, purchased from the local utility at 58 cents a kilowatt hour. It's kind of nice to go to fish camp. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be there for a whole lot of time, but you know, like I went for 10 days once and I loved it, you know, put away a lot, you know, jarred a lot of fish and, you know, opening a jar of salmon in the middle of the winter, it's nothing like it. The Yukon River is the second longest river in the continental United States. Yukon supports a rich fishery of, of salmon. Because the river is 1,700 miles long, these, these fish have developed a, uh, a gene pool that provides them energy to go long distances. So even though Tanana is 800 miles from the ocean, the fish that arrive are still rich in fish oil and are a mainstay of the residents. So the, the typical well at Tanana is only 60 foot deep and the aquifer tends to run low during the springtime. At that point we have to draw water from the Yukon River and treat it further than typically from the aquifer. So we intend to raise some monies and drill some new wells for this facility and hopefully have a better source of underground water. Energy for transportation and food are very tightly linked. Until recently, Tanana was only accessible by air or water. A new road has given the community access to cheaper food and fuel. The road could not come to Tanana. Tanana is on the north side of the Yukon River, and the road terminates on the south side of the Yukon River which is six miles upriver. So in the summertime, folks have to uh, park their vehicle and boat to Tanana. And then in the wintertime, the city and the tribe build an ice road from the terminus to Tanana. And we've done that for the last four years. And that allows us to have year-round uh, surface access during the winter months all the way from Tanana to, to urban Alaska. The cost savings from freight reduction would be dramatic and that's proven to be the case. Our freight costs are less, well less than half of the barge and only an eighth to a quarter of the cost of air freight. So there's been a significant cost of living savings by this Pioneer Road. The central link between food, energy and water in rural Alaska is one that can determine a community's health and future.